One, two, three. Okay, since I don't have the car jacked up, I really can't get an amazing view of the breather box, but I'm looking in near the front driver's side tie rod, s steering control arm type thing, the boot. Let me zoom out and show you that. I'm sorry about this. See that? And I'm looking in from there and I have the camera zoomed in. You see that? See where the sunlight is, that spot of sunlight by the bottom left? Look up above that, that's your oil breather box. It's held in by two bolts. Two very stuck bolts if it's never been maintained. And, um, yeah, I use, see that, the bolts right near the center, there's like three bumps. There's one to the left, one in the middle, and another one all the way to the right. The one in, the, in between the front bump, which is near this blurry piece to the left, there's a bolt. I used an extension to get to that one. And then all the way to the right, there's a bolt on the end, which I used a, um, a really, I call it my messed up ratchet. It's a ratchet that can bend in all these different directions to get in tight places, and I used it to get to that one. But be careful, because you're going to whack your fingers with these bolts, because they'll be really tight, really tight. And then they'll just come loose and your hand will slam into something. Uh, and it hurts. But I'm, uh, yeah, to get your breather box out, you're going to want to undo those bolts, take off all the hosing and piping to it, which is just that one piece and the flame trap, which I showed you earlier. And, um, yeah, you lift it up and you bring it over the starter motor and, um, towards you. And it should come out fine. But also, I have to let you know there's the, um, the fuel injection wiring harness is screwed to that and um... you just gonna... the screw is held in by a self-tapping type clip which the screw is screwed into probably definitely at the factory and um... and yeah it's on there pretty tight but you just need a little teeny bit of PB catalyst try not to get it on the wiring harness even if you... J what I did is I filled actually a piece of vacuum line with it a junk vacuum line by the way and I just had the vacuum line in the loop and I pointed it towards the uh that screw and I lifted up the other end of the vacuum line and let the PB catalyst work its magic. <coughs> Sorry, I have a terrible cough. And um yeah, you let that sit. And you also want to put PB catalyst on those bolts because and it helps you not like it's it's really good for unseizing all those bolts and stuff. I'm sorry, I'm talking funny because I'm trying not to cough. And um uh, <coughs> well it didn't work. And, um, yeah, so, you put PB catalyst on all the bolts to get them out, and, um, okay, sorry, after a coughing fit, I'm back. You see that yellow in the center of the screen? That's part of the wiring harness that you're going to be fighting with to get this breather box out. Now, after you take that screw out, make sure you hold on to it, because it's self-topping, so you don't have to worry about a bolt on the back end of it or anything. I say it's a bolt. It's a, it's a bolt with a thread on it, kind of like a screw, but without a screw put into it, like the, the slot for a Phillips or a flathead. And you get that out. You take it out, you set it aside with all your other bolts which you just took out, and you're going to have to push this wire harness up. It's, it's like got this little finger-like clip thing. It looks kind of like this, and it's on there, on another clip, and you pull that up out of the way, and then you push it up out of the way, and then you can move the breather box. You finagle it, all the wiggling and squiggling that most moving things at a hard place it's involved with, you do, and then you get the breather box out by lifting it up and over the starter motor, because it won't come out any other way because there's all this stuff in the way such as other parts of the wiring harness and the steering column and <coughs> all that good stuff. So, yeah, but this is really just an intro. I'm not going to do a... I've caught on the power steering pump with the camera. I'm not going to do a real uh, in-depth thing about it right now because it's actually it's pretty extensive. But, yeah, I didn't know what the PCV system was when I first started with this, and I was like, oh, my God, I have to change my PCV system out and... Uh, all that, but I say, I recommend that if your PCB system hasn't had maintenance done on it in 20 years or however old your Volvo is, and um, you just, you, you disassemble the entire system and you buy a whole new one. First you buy the parts, which I will, um, I think I've outlined for you. It's the breather box, the flame trap, the breather hose, the flame trap hose, and then some more vacuum line for that PCB orifice because whatchamacallit um, the old vacuum line gets old crapped up and it doesn't seal quite as good anymore the old breather hose actually works pretty well but I recommend a new one I just couldn't get my hands on a new one 
So yeah, you replace all the parts down. Then your next oil change, what you're going to do is you're going to take the entire PCB system, well, apart again, and then you're just going to clean it out with degreaser. And then you're going to let it dry. Make sure there's no degreaser left in it because you don't want that stuff going back into your engine because oil vapors come up in through the bottom of the breather box and then the vapors accumulate into droplets and they go down through a sump. Oh, there's also the sump. I'll tell you about that in a minute. That's something to worry about. And yeah, they go back into the sump and they go back into the engine. And, um... And they go back into the engine and all that. So, you don't want any degreaser going into your engine because, well, that would not be good, would it? But, um, uh... Yeah, when you're taking the breather box out, there's this hose, which will be probably to your left if you're working from the driver's side, on the bottom of the breather box. Do not mess with it. You keep it in the block. It, pro it shouldn't come up, but if you, I don't know, for some reason it melted itself onto the bottom of the breather box and something or other, you're going to need to hold it down because if you take out that sump hose, I'll see if I can find a diagram of this stuff for you. If you take out that sump hose, you will, um, have to reseat your oil pan, which involves uh, lifting the entire engine out of the car from the transmission. So you wouldn't want to do that. But um, yeah, another uh, a symptom of uh, the PCV system being clogged is uh, oil leaking out of your drain, your oil fill ca filler cap. I was, when I first got the car, I'm like, why does oil keep leaking out of this thing? And I, I, you know, I take some a rag and wipe it down, and then the next day after driving, I'd be like, oh, there's more oil there, this is a real pain, you know? And, um, so that, that also got me into figuring out what was wrong with the PCV system. But, uh, yeah, I hope this helped. I will leave some directions in the, in the description. I will definitely leave links to IPD USA and everything I've been talking about, the parts and everything, so you guys can hopefully find out easier than what I had to do. I had to go through tons of forums, go through all these things, and it was just nearly a nightmare to find the diagrams and everything that I needed. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and um, good luck. And, yeah, subscribe if you want. I'll see if I can do some more videos. I know, I'm considering upgrading my ignition system with some high-performance spark plug wires, but I kind of like the Volvo OEM ones. I'm a real OEM person. I really like everything being standard in my 240s. But, uh, yeah, so, good luck, and, um, if any questions, comments, anything, leave them, please, I'll try and respond, and, yeah, I'll always try and answer your questions. Thanks for watching, and, uh,